persons are married each year. What's more, 93% of all Americans marry at least once before reaching their 40th birthday. On a percentage basis, we are one of the most marrying nations in the world. Consider the facts. Did you know 88% of first-time brides receive an engagement ring? Or that 80% of all first-time weddings are planned as formal occasions? And that 96% of all couples hold a reception after their ceremony? And over 80% of first-time brides purchase formal bridal gowns for their big day? As if to discourage all the articles and news stories about the ailing status of American marriages, seven out of every eight first-time weddings are held in synagogues or churches. We have a strong tradition going here, besides the fact that the wedding industry represents over a $7 billion a year contribution to the national economy. The American wedding is alive and well. The fact of the matter is that we Americans, Protestant, Jewish, Catholic, and all others, are getting married in much the same way our great-great-grandparents did over a hundred years ago. We dress in long white romantic gowns and elaborate formal wear. We still repeat all the wedding traditions. And the reason is simple, or should I say symbol. Weddings represent a symbol of love and respect that's profoundly important to us, each to be remembered, relived, and cherished forever. Now enter the video camera. Video and weddings are a matchmaker's perfect match. If ever there was an event in life to be captured in the sound, color, and motion of video, it would be a wedding. That's what this program is all about, fully capturing the joyous event. Whether you're a relative, friend, or paid professional, the task, attention to detail, and skills needed to shoot a wedding are much the same. So for the purpose of discussion today, we'll simply settle on a church. This church. We'll need a bride and groom, Sharon and Ben, soon to be Daniels. We'll need an entourage of loving family, friends, and acquaintances. And last but not at all least, a home video producer, Paul Cantor. If there's a hero in this story, it's going to be Paul. And like you, during the course of this production, Paul will have to wear a number of different hats, from being a pre-production detective getting all the facts, to an experienced and resourceful director, from a creative playwright and plot man, to a skilled and steady-handed cameraman. In the next few minutes, we'll backtrack over the past week and follow Paul through critical production phases, recommended for any wedding production you'll undertake. The planning of your production, the development of an action story on paper, and through the basics of continuity shooting. Your careful pre-production and shooting preparation. And of course, the day of the shoot where it all comes together. Speaking of which, it's all going to come together right here this afternoon for Sharon and Ben Daniels at 2.15 sharp. On to planning. To quote an editor of Bride Magazine, the American girl is married long before she's even in high school. Her images of her wedding day begin when she's practically an infant. Believe me, you can bet the bride has put plenty of thought into her wedding, and your production plan must accommodate her wishes, both before and during the wedding. As a video hobbyist, Paul's experience shooting two previous weddings helped a great deal in his first meeting with Sharon and Ben. Through work, I'd known Ben Daniels indirectly for probably a year. Through a mutual friend, he found out I'd done some wedding tapes. Both Ben and Sharon decided they wanted their wedding tape, but it was only a week away. So there will be time to get it together. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Planning a production is like pouring a foundation for a home. You'll succeed only by first building on solid ground. My first concern is always to circle the parameters of the project, what they expect of me, and what help I could expect in return. We're depending on you to make it really nice. On earlier shoots, Paul picked up on the idea of roughing out a quick chronological flowchart of events to be shot. Most every wedding runs on a schedule. From Ben and Sharon, I was able to map out the key events that they had planned for their big day. My follow-up questions dealt with where the planned events would be held. Although it may seem obvious, it always pays to ask and be sure. 
since it will be Paul's responsibility to not only set up, shoot, and break down, but to move and set up again between each separate shooting location, it pays to be buttoned down on both places and times of events. It was important to determine the sequence and times at which the day's events were scheduled. How long is the ceremony? When will guests arrive? How long is the reception? At that point, I could figure out pretty much what I could and couldn't shoot. We'll have a lot of people at the reception. So, Paul, what else can we tell you? My final question centered around who all would be involved both in front of the camera and behind the scenes. How large is the wedding party? How many in the church service? Who is the minister? Who is running the reception? Paul has found that it's extremely important to be a good communicator. Getting the clearest possible view of what's in the couple's mind is easily as important as running a camera. First, identify events. Then find out the location of events and the sequence of events. Then take note of all the people involved. Rule of thumb. Do always keep an accurate production log or notebook. Invariably, it will save you time, trouble, and keep you in the know. Don't ever leave a wedding shoot planning session without names, addresses, and phone numbers of key people involved. From the best man to the reception caterer, it's up to you to get it straight. Do always secure some member of the family or close friend of the bride and groom as your special helper and guide. Then you'll be sure to know who's important to get on tape. After talking with Ben and Sharon, I had a good feeling. They were good people, and I was going to make them a good tape. A wedding treasure they could pass down to generations. Good man. It's time to start thinking in terms of an action story. Not necessarily a written script, but a video story that you write with your camera. We'll be looking at that next while Paul gets his planning underway. has a long and glorious tradition. As one of our most ancient and persistent social institutions, the wedding celebration continues to be one of the moments in anyone's life. Recorded in dance, painting, architecture, even the humble snapshot is cherished with the same loving memory. See, your action story must be developed around both the general event and the more intimate personal event. And your skill in telling this action story is developed with this. How you use it in your shot selection. How you compose your frame. And how long you let a shot run. To be realistic, when shooting in a church, you'll probably be limited in where you can shoot from. If you're shooting with only one camera and plan on editing in the camera as you shoot, your best bet is to stay close to the action. From here, you can cover the walk down the aisle and hold on a satisfactory side angle for the entire ceremony. Now, if home editing is no problem for you, that is, simple recorder to recorder assemble edits, so much the better. Use this same camera angle as your master scene for the entire altar sequence. Now, let's keep on developing this action story. With a second or third camera position for close-ups, we can detail action and emotion. The blushing bride, the gallant groom, the exchange of rings. These shots are the jewels in your action story development. The time and place to get these cameo shots is directly after the ceremony and before the reception. This style of shooting is called out of sequence shooting and will take some simple assemble editing later, but look how nicely the sequence flows. We can cut into the main action, go back to the wide and go for a cutaway from the action anytime we want. Of course, to round out your ceremony sequence, you may want to take some wide shots of the guests before the wedding begins. Telling an action story with your camera takes imagination. Why, with just the way you frame your subject, you can help tell a story. 
Here, by framing the recessional this way, you give the bride and groom plenty of room to move in. This is called leading your subject. Doesn't this look like you're rushing them? That's not part of your story at all. How you compose your shots will have a great deal of impact on your viewer. In closing, here are four easy tips for better wedding composition. Keep your background simple. Try to find the best angle with the least commotion behind. Use the rule of thirds, where you divide your screen like this and concentrate your subject where the lines intersect. Keep your horizon line straight. When possible, use strong leading lines to lead the viewer's attention to the main story action. My gosh, where's the time gone? They'll be here soon. Let's undertake the final step before the big production, namely pre-production. Believe me, Paul's been busy. It'll be a small, comfortable wedding with about 75 guests. There'll be a best man and two other groomsmen, my brother and a friend. Hey, Daniel's reception is in the main room overlooking the lake. You'll have no trouble finding plenty of electrical outlets. In the pre-production phase of your wedding tape, you begin to focus on tactical strategies. You've got an overall plan, you've got an action story shot list. Now you begin to familiarize yourself with problems you may encounter while actually shooting. I mentioned before you'll wear a lot of hats in your role as home video producer. Well, in pre-production, you don your detective's hat and hit the streets, see? When you work in pre-pro, you don't trust nobody. Guy like me has to see every location with his own eyes. On weddings, large or small, pre-production is what's going to make you a hero or a bum, see? First, a checklist. Make a separate sheet for each of your locations. Addresses, shoot time, Name of your contact, and a phone number should be at the top. Next, contact your contacts. Could be the minister. Could be the hotel manager. Could be anybody, see? Tell them who you are or what you're up to, and that you need no more than 20 minutes to browse around. When you pull up at each location, Note the parking facilities, entries and exits to the building for loading and unloading equipment. When you meet your contact, give him your card if you have one and get one of his. Then get down to business. First, electrical power. A wall plugs conveniently located to where you might be shooting. You may need extension cords. Are plugs of the three-prong variety? You may need adapters. Next, lighting. What's available? Overhead, windows, floor lamps. Keep in mind, extra lights you may bring will need extension cords and may blow fuses. Be sure to distribute the electrical load between more than one circuit. Next, camera placement and sound. Use your shot list as a guide. Can you get a wide shot? Can you locate out of the main traffic flow? Can you use your camera's built-in microphone? Or will you need an external mic? Remember, one sheet for each location. On it, list all equipment, special accessories, camera, and setups you need for that location. And remember, with good pre-production, no one will ever come back to you and say, shoot it again, Sam. Based on Paul's pre-production work on the Daniels wedding, he's decided to try borrowing an extra camera, recorder, and wireless microphone setup from a friend. You can see, pre-production skills are really worth developing. From attending the rehearsal to scouting your locations, it's the only way to guarantee you'll be at the right place at the right time with the right equipment. 
Just remember, who, what, where, why, when. When? Which reminds me, it's after 12 noon. According to Paul's shooting schedule, he should be getting underway. Let's follow him and see how we put it all together. home a couple of minutes early to prepare for his first setup. He planned to shoot four sequences at this location. In a simple setting, I'll bounce light off the ceiling. It's quick and gives me a pleasing natural effect. Sharon looked beautiful, though she was a bit nervous. After shooting two more interior sequences of Sharon coming downstairs and greeting her bridesmaids and her father, Paul set up for an exterior shot of leaving for the church. arrived at the church and parked in a specially reserved parking space close to the side entrance, Paul set up a wide shot at the guest registry. My plan was to leapfrog my two cameras. Here my number two camera will cover the guests arriving. he found the minister and set up his wireless microphone, Paul moved to the altar area. With some general lighting in place, he adjusted his number one camera for the master shot on the altar. This camera recorder setup will take the entire ceremony audio track off the minister's wireless microphone. Fifteen minutes to go. I checked my battery levels on camera number two setup and went portable to catch some candid shots of the groom and best man. With my number two camera in tow, I made my way back to the altar position. Everything looked fine, so I put camera number one in record and simply let it run through the entire ceremony. Paul had planned just enough time to make it to his freelance position at another vantage point in the church. Here he got a few established shots just before the ceremony began. in the sight of God to join together this man and this woman in the bonds of marriage. Who giveth this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I. Into Action. Reaction. This is where the real done. wedding story is Therefore, told. The drama, the emotion, Ben and Sharon's magic moment captured forever. Let him speak. Paul's sole responsibility now is to make speak. each shot count. Count toward advancing his action story. Here, Paul takes camera number one into the action, and then locks it off for his cover shot, freeing up his handheld camera for close-up. Do you, Benjamin Douglas, take this woman to be thy wedded wife, and pledge to love, honor, cherish, and sustain her in sickness and in health so long as you both shall live? I do. Do you, Sharon Patricia, 
take this man to be thy wedded husband and pledge to love, honor, cherish, and sustain him in sickness and in health so long as you both shall live? I do. As a cameraman, you must be flexible. Ben and Sharon's choice to let Paul shoot his close-ups during the actual ceremony really pays off in the exchange of ring sequence. What token of sincerity have you brought? The ring. With this ring, with this ring, I thee wed. I thee wed. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. With this ring, with this ring. I thee wed. I thee wed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. For as much as you, Ben, and Sharon, have consented in holy wedlock, and have witnessed the same before God and this company, I pronounce you husband and wife. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You may kiss the bride. Just before the recessional, Paul quietly left the altar area and set up at the back of the church for this angle. Notice Paul's use of strong reading lines in his composition. some candid shots at the receiving line, Paul stayed with his handheld number two camera. As the last of the guests were moving through the line, Paul slipped outside and found some pranksters at work. I can be right, right. Here they come. Paul had just enough time to reset and get Ben and Sharon leaving for the reception. Well, needless to say, it was a beautiful ceremony. Everything went just perfectly. Paul's next shooting setup would be at the reception. Rule of thumb. Do always place a backup cassette recorder near the altar to make double sure you have a clean audio track. Do always catalog all your shots after the shoot. This is particularly important if you plan to shoot your wedding out of sequence. on the traditional reception activities.
was done for the day. He had shot about an hour and 15 minutes worth of tape between his two cameras and planned to spend about four or five hours editing raw footage into about a 30-minute program. Hopefully, this will be Ben and Sharon's first and only wedding, but probably not so for Paul and maybe not for you. Ben and Sharon will enjoy their video family heirloom for years to come, and we hope you've enjoyed this learning tape as well. Till the next time, happy shooting.